When I started, I was but a simple child, unburdened by promise and expectations. The delusions of grandeur that pollute an otherwise pure soul, unsuited for the rage of war. But time molds a man from modest clay. Experience breeds growth and resilience. Seven years of service dampens inhibitions and inspires creativity in the face of hostile normality. Two hundred offerings have since taken place in pursuit of walking the unending path of recognition. What? Hang on, hang on, hang on, stop. Are you trying to tell me that I've made 200 of these types of videos? Or maybe this is number 200? Wow. That's, uh, that's a lot of, uh... Damn. This has been Rabbit Luigi, and there are many ways of handling a trilogy in modern media. This has been Rabbit Luigi, and what sets this fourth wall break apart from something like this? This is Rabbit Luigi, and there's a special place reserved for Rabbit Luigi, and I think what we can take away from Rabbit Luigi and the Rabbit Luigi and Rabbit Luigi and Rabbit Luigi and Rabbit Luigi and I see this is Rabbit Luigi. Okay, that's good, but. I also recently reached 300,000 subscribers, so I feel like if we're going to celebrate anything, it should probably be that instead. Could we maybe celebrate that instead? <coughs> Alright, nice. That's good. I, I, I feel good about that. Um, I'm going to talk about beards now, if that's okay for everybody. It seems like a really good time to do that. So, you know, I mean, I, I shaved mine off, but I needed to look presentable, so you know, that kind of makes sense. Since we're diving into this topic straight away, I guess I should spend a brief amount of time explaining what I'm looking for from a bearded video game character. Honestly, not a lot. Beards are given out so frequently these days that they don't carry any particular traits on their own. It's what they do when they get there. Besides every other video, I go into a fair amount of detail over what makes something great and how it relates to everything else. Sometimes I just want to be a little more superficial. That being said, I've tried to approach this with some semblance of critical analysis, and all I know is that Pokemon is perhaps not the first place you'd go for beautiful beards, but maybe you should. You've probably never thought about it before. That's where you've been going wrong. But it kind of makes sense when you think where Pokemon takes a lot of its designs from. When Game Freak aren't looking at some inanimate objects and thinking that some googly eyes would work nicely there, they're anthropomorphizing animals and other creatures. I say that, but it's mostly varying degrees of facial hair. You make some kind of chestnut hedgehog and you give him a beard. Alakazam has a mega revolution. He deserves a mega beard. Nosepass is some kind of Maui compass nose, so clearly his evolution needs a mustache made of iron filings, what? That's way too good. But it's not a beard, technically. Beartick has a beard and it's made of icicles. That's genuinely incredible. It isn't something carried over from the pre-evolved form Cub Chew, but this guy does have that Wind Waker snot drip and Bulbapedia says that said mucus is the source of its power. As the only other form of water on Beartick's body, I can only assume that the icicle beard is the source of Beartick's power. And that is truly magnificent. Beards are a very effective way of illustrating character traits without the character needing to say or do anything. You know, if you see a heavy heaping of hair on someone's chin, you can probably assume one of a couple of things. So, if it's white, they're probably quite old. If it isn't white, but is instead bushy and unkempt, they've probably got an interesting story to tell. I knew there was a reason why I felt like The Last of Us was so detached from reality. It wasn't the zombies or the characters or the voice acting since all of those were great, but Joel's beard looks really good. Not sure if I was playing the wrong game or anything, but this is not the kind of beard you'd see attached to a deeply flawed individual who murders fools indiscriminately and is struggling with deep-rooted parental conflict. Besides, in a zombie apocalypse, the last thing you should care about is a well-groomed beard, because that's not gonna save you. It's not like you're gonna get pinned by a zombie only for it to back off because holy cow, that beard's just too damn fine to chew on. I was supposed to link this back to God of War, but I 
think I've forgotten how. Anyway, the latest in the long line of killing indiscriminately simulators hasn't even come out yet, but we've seen enough trailers and minutes of gameplay from the new God of War to observe that Kratos is now rocking a big bushy beard. I know it's been eight years since the last game and this year's offering is acting as a soft reboot, but is that really enough to drive a man to put the razor away for all that time? I don't know, he's got a son now, so maybe he feels a need to be more stoic and grounded in reality, but I really like the beard because thematically they've knocked it out of the park. This is a Kratos whose journey to the strange new land of Scandinavia to kick the shit out of some Norse gods. And not only does the beard work as a representation of this change and how Kratos himself is a little older and wiser, but Norse is where you find Vikings with the beards. All I'm saying is that if he shaves it off at any point in this game, I'm gonna consider this a failed reboot in every sense. Don't screw it up now. If you're a connoisseur like me, the first part of someone's face you look at is the chin, because that's where the party is. More seriously, a beard can provide a character with a unique feature that others lack, creating a disparity in the roster that is rarely taken advantage of, really. If you presume that, like Beartick, that the beard is where all the power originates from, then you can safely assume that that is what you're gonna want to focus on. Remove the beard, and you defeat the boss. Sounds kind of fiddly though, doesn't it? You'd have to delicately trim the beard down, and that's not something I want to do in a game. Climbing up the beard to reach a giant monster's weak spot? Now you're speaking my language. Shadow of the Colossus is a game that showcases a deliberate conflict in tone. You see these gigantic behemoths in the distance, and you're overcome with a great deal of determination and purpose to take them down, but they're quite docile and not really hurting anybody, so you feel bad about it, but... Then you make your way to Barber, and then everything's just really funny. Not in the traditional sense, but if you lock me up in an ancient temple with an 80-foot giant who has one of the most convenient instances of facial hair in the history of video games, then your message of trying to make me feel bad about what I'm doing falls flat on its face. A lot of other colossi are covered in fur because of their animalistic natures and appearances, and also because Wanda needs something to grab onto in order to climb up and stab those weak spots. Barber, with his stupidly appropriate nickname, makes up for a lack of fur on his body by donning a large beard for you to negotiate in order to reach the more important areas. Aesthetically, it's pretty impressive, but actually working it into the boss fight in a pivotal way is something that makes me appreciate the intelligence behind Shadow of the Colossus a bit more. Not only can these guys convince you that slaying huge monsters is a bad thing, they can also make a beard incredibly useful. That takes talent. Sadly, the world we live in doesn't appreciate beards as much as I do, which makes it that much harder to pick out the special instances where a video game developer puts in a bit more effort in order to unlock the true potential of a beard. I'm reminded of character customization screens where you can summon facial fuzz from nowhere, or even something like GTA V where you can buy a haircut that surgically attaches hair to your face, and I feel like we could be doing a lot more in this department. You're telling me that you can't have hair or a beard grow in real time? I think we've mastered every other part of gaming now. We could start focusing on this. As is the case with so many other features, like implementing tutorials and keeping the quality high across an open world, The Witcher 3 is indeed the answer to most questions you're likely to ask. Previous games in the franchise had Geralt strutting around clean-shaven, but with the third game acting as the creative and technical peak, he finally embraced the role as a wandering nomad and grew that beard out. For sure, it's an enjoyable characteristic, but The Witcher 3 went a couple steps beyond by allowing Geralt's beard to grow in real time. Now you can travel around the world, both manually and through using fast travel, and Geralt's beard will gradually grow and potentially require a trim from time to time. Is this the most dynamic beard in the history of video games? Yes, almost certainly. Is it The Witcher 3's best feature? Like you even need to ask. You can enjoy Geralt's magic beard for its entertaining qualities, but it still has its uses away from that. Having your protagonist undergo big, notable changes during the course of your adventure 
helps make them more relatable and it helps Geralt feel more human and real. And that's incredible. You don't even have to try very hard with the character, just give them a beard that grows over time. You were all laughing earlier when I said that we should have this more often, but now you want it in every video game. Get behind that realism. I may have accidentally made a decent video here, at least in terms of judging beards by more than just face value. And holy shit, what a pun that is! Can I retire now? I said near the start that I want to be a tad more superficial here, but I guess I've made so many videos that trying to break things down is what I default to, and that takes time to do. Sometimes I just want to see a beautiful beard and have everything done for me. <laughs> Okay then, this works as well. Final Fantasy is a franchise that has become more ambitious and ridiculous with every new game, sometimes in misguided directions. But there's a host of characters and properties that have been developed since they were introduced very early on. One such character is Rama, or Ramu, as I've heard some people call him. An old man who specializes in lightning magic who can be summoned in a whole load of Final Fantasy games to zap the crap out of opponents. Sometimes he's played an important role within the context of the story, but mostly he's someone you can summon and should you require some thunder attacks in your life, and also, the world's most spectacular beard. I mean, what the fuck is this? And why can't I have one? Most of Rama is beard. Most of Rama is not old man, but actually beard. That would be quite impressive if he stayed as he was in the older games where he wasn't much bigger than the characters or the enemies you were fighting, but at some point, I think roughly around the time of Final Fantasy XIII, I'm not so sure, Rama got huge. Like, a beard that comes down to your ankles is one thing when you're normal sized, it's something completely different when that beard alone is taller than an office block. I for one welcome our bearded overlord and respectfully request that we all attempt to look like him. Because that sounds amazing! This brings me Luigi, and even if Rama's beard doesn't come with many fun qualities, the commitment to the original character design is what I love the most about it. Sometimes it's a little shorter, and sometimes it's shaped like a squid or an elephant, but most of the time it's just this absolutely massive beard, and that is at least a little bit inspiring. Remember, all the best gods have beards. <laughs> Have you got an idea that you'd like me to turn to a countdown? Let me know in a comment down below and make sure you check out my Twitter or I'll be turning the best submissions into a poll where you can then decide the best topic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.